As you guys know, I own a Tesla Model Y Performance, and unlike many other Tesla owners on YouTube, I'm not a big fanboy. I made videos documenting my real-world experience with this car as a normal consumer, and it's not all good. I had a chance to review the Mustang Mach-E a few years back, and I had a lot of good things to say about it, but it just wasn't fun to drive. It felt slow. Here is the Mustang Mach-E GT, and uh, yeah, a lot has changed. I know this isn't a typical Mustang, and I know what typical Mustangs are. So much, I was invited to a Mustang event to check out the seventh generation Mustang. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. But before we get to my comparisons and my opinion, we gotta talk about pricing. The Mach-E goes through the dealership, so pricing can be MSRP, but true pricing will be once you get into the dealership and do the dealership dance for a couple of days. Don't get me started on the dealership model, I don't like it. The Mach-E Select, the entry-level Mach-E trim, starts at just under $43,000. And with that price, you get 250 miles of range, 6.3, zero to 60 times, seating for five in a drainable frunk. But it also doesn't come with a mobile charger. Ford charges $500 for that. The Model Y standard range is just under $48,000. It's rated for 270 miles on a single charge, and it has a five second, zero to 60 time, seating for five, and there's also a frunk too. This too does not come with a home charging kit and you'd need to pay $250 for a mobile connector or $475 for Tesla's wall connector. There's also a federal tax incentive to go EV, but according to multiple sources, as of today, the Mach-E is eligible for $3,750 a tax credit and the Model Y is $7,500 worth of tax credit. So this brings both cars baseline price to nearly the same if you factor in the tax credits. The trim that I had was just under $72,000. But looking at Ford's website and dealership inventory, it looks like that same trim is going for around $68,000 now. The Model Y Performance is going for $55,000. But once you deck it out like mine with the white paint, 21 inch wheels, white interior, you're looking at around $58,000 as of today. Now going up to this trim, zero to 60 on the Mach-E is 3.8. Zero to 60 on the Model Y is 3.5. As far as mileage, the Mach-E is rated for 260 miles and the Model Y is rated for 330 miles. Now, there's a big difference in pricing once you start adding in different autonomous packages. The Mustang has theirs baked in and Tesla is more so a la carte. If you add in the enhanced autopilot for $6,000, then we're gonna be nearly the same price. If you add in full self-driving for $15,000, well, yeah, that's a different conversation. Now Tesla does come with some autonomous driving baked in and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. I had the Mach-E GT for a week and it was my daily driver. I had my car seat in there, I put my golf clubs in there, I took it through car wash, I did over the road charging to simulate a road trip. The Model Y I've had for two years and I got 15,000 miles on it. I've done road trips in it and I've also had the Model 3 before the Y. First, I'll say that I initially loved the Model Y for its simplicity, but it's gotten stale over time. Now I'm sure if you had any interior for four years or so, you'd feel the same. The Mach-E interior is more interesting. There's different textures and stitching and badging and this nice large screen mixed in with tactile buttons and touch controls is very nice. Also it runs Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning I'll have updates and it will launch and run all the newest apps. For what it's worth, Tesla has done a great job at updating its software too. And there's a lot of new features that wasn't there before but it still feels limited since it doesn't fully integrate to my phone. The fit and finish in the interior and exterior is much more tight on the Model E and the Model Y, like for example, when you close the door, it can sound a bit clunky. On the Mach-E, it's just a nice thud when it's closed. Also, way less road noise on the Mach-E when driving. Even with the full engine noise turned off, you can tell Ford has been making cars for a long time since all the car stuff is done right compared to the Model Y, which has had a lot of quality control issues and of course on mine too. For exterior design, it's a crapshoot. You know, for some angles, I love how the Model Y looks and other angles, it looks like a big egg driving down the road. I do feel that the Mach-E looks great from every angle and the stance looks really aggressive. But on the road, the Mach-E does kind of blend in with other vehicles. The Model Y has a ton of settings that you can customize a lot of stuff with the car and driving modes, and you can even make adjustments to steering so it matches how you drive, which is really fun to do. 
The Mach-E has different driving modes, which does get a bit more granular on the adjustments. And the full engine sounds that pumps into the car, it makes the car feel like it's more fun to drive. I know it's fake sounds, it's not as fast, but it's still fun to drive and the engine sounds makes it feel faster. I know I sound silly saying that, but it's true. Now Tesla's big claim to fame is the autopilot that this car has. As a person who paid for it on my previous car, but didn't pay for it on this car, I'm gonna tell you the truth. The free version is good enough for most people. It will follow the lines on the road, it will slow down, it will speed up. It's more of an advanced cruise control at this point. It's gotten better navigating tricky construction, faded lines, and also harsh shadows. I trust it a lot. If I paid $60,000, it'll give me access to Smart Summon, Auto Park, and a few other things. But honestly, I don't think that's worth 6 k If I were to pay the $15,000, it gives me self-driving, which is still in beta, and most likely will be in beta past the life of this car. And honestly, as someone who's used it, it's scary. It doesn't work great, and it's nothing I would ever use in a normal scenario. Years ago, Tesla was leading the charge with autonomous driving, but now many other cars can do what Tesla is doing for the free version. Now, Ford has Blue Cruise on this car. For it to work, the road needs to be mapped. So it's not basing it solely off like vision or, or sensors. And according to Ford, up to 97% of freeways in Canada and the US are covered. So in driving on a main freeway, you'll see a little blue icon pop up, meaning it's ready to activate. Now, once you launch it, it takes over and it does a great job. I've never had a situation where I didn't feel safe. It will pass other vehicles on the left side if they're going too slow. It can adjust within the lane too if another car is getting too close, which is handy on curves. I've seen this happen a few times when there's a semi next to me. And that's one thing I absolutely do not like about Absolute Center, which Tesla does. This really starts to lean over still in the lane, but still I feel protected knowing that if that car comes a little bit over, I still have enough room. Tesla does a great job as well, but to get lane changing, it requires a $6,000 upgrade. But that upgrade also allows the route to be followed. So it'll take you off exits and Blue Cruise does not do that. One thing that is important is charging infrastructure. Any Tesla owner will talk to you about this to their blue in the face of why Tesla is superior. Now Tesla has nearly 30,000 chargers in North America. And when I go for a road trip, I have chargers along the way. I have several chargers I pass. Let's say this charger is down, I can go to the next one, or if I take a different path, I have access to more superchargers. Now with the Mach-E, I'm not saying there aren't chargers along the way. On the contrary, there are more and more chargers. I even seen Rivian chargers recently, but when comparing it to the option that Tesla has, it's far behind and reliability and speed is a big problem. I tried charging the Mach-E at five different Electrify America stations. Three stations were just fine. Two stations had multiple chargers down or very slow charging speeds. When talking to other EV owners at these stations, they said Electrify America for them has been hit or miss. One person was considering selling their EV for Tesla for that very reason. Now, I'm not a person who uses superchargers often as I don't go on family road trips with my vehicle that much, but for people who do take that occasional two to three hour drive, that is something they should consider. So taking a look at the trunk here, we can see that it is kind of a shorter trunk area compared to what we see in the Tesla Model Y. Now there is just enough room, I think for golf clubs, we're gonna have to test that out obviously, but you're not gonna be storing a ton of stuff here. Obviously you can lower the seats to extend this out. We do have a tire pump and we also have our charging accessories. And then also we do have a 12 volt right here, back here. And we also have some grocery hooks too, to hook different things in. Okay, so here's my golf bag. Let's go ahead and give it a shot and see if we can get this in the vehicle. So yeah, as you can see, it does fit in the vehicle. Um, maybe I can get two golf bags like kind of on top of each other. Let's go ahead and try that out. So here's a second golf bag. Kind of go this crossing way like that. So you can lay two golf bags on top of each other and it should close, let's see. All right, it does close and it does lock. So you are able to put two golf bags in there. Um, one golf bag was pretty big. This is a cart bag and this one is a walking bag. So 
I don't know, I think two cart bags could fit in, but at the end of the day, there is enough room for golf clubs and obviously groceries, but obviously the Tesla still has more room. Now coming over to the Tesla, there's a lot more room in here. Um, obviously I use this often, I throw stuff in and out, and that's kind of important for me when it comes to space, when it comes to room. I need to be able to throw my golf clubs in, I need to be able to throw things in, lower the seats and move stuff around because this is basically my family vehicle. And having a vehicle to put a lot of stuff in is very important. And obviously this is not an SUV, this is not a truck, but having a lot of cargo space is very important to me. For me, if I could trade my Model Y for the Mustang Mach-E GT, would I? I went back and forth on this several times, but the answer is still no. The charging network for me isn't a main factor, but, but being able to charge where I'm not near my house is something that's still important to me. Something I do maybe 10 times or so. And Ford and GM is very aware of this and they're moving their standard charging to the Tesla plug. I don't know if they're gonna be able to use Tesla's charger. I, I don't know what that looks like, but in a couple of years, my answer could definitely change. But beyond charging, the Mach-E is a better vehicle all around. But if you had a decision between both cars, which one would you go with? Okay, as promised, I was invited to check out the brand new seventh generation Mustang, the real Mustang. I had a chance to drive the EcoBoost Mustang and also the straight up V8 version of it as well. As you guys know, I love EVs, but I and I think they're the future, but I think there is room for both. The EcoBoost was fun to drive and it still sounded good and it was actually pretty fun. I took it around the winding roads of California and it was a blast. And the new software allows for complete customizations over your vehicle from the handbrake all the way down to suspension to braking and everything in between, even custom colors. I really like what Ford is doing with their software to customize that experience. Now the GT was amazing to drive and we actually had a chance to take it on a track. We had a chance to go through the winding roads and, and hills and mountains. And also we took a drifting class. So being able to drift this vehicle is a lot of fun. And I'm not saying this vehicle is made for drift. Maybe, I don't know. It, it feels like the vehicle is made for drifting. I don't know if I'm gonna like drift my way to drop my kid off to school, but just learning how to drift it and seeing that if you are a track enthusiast, this vehicle is already ready for you to have those things. Overall, I had a lot of time driving the Mustang and th there's something to be said about the rumble of a real engine kind of under your seat. And it was a lot of fun to drive that and I learned a whole lot about Mustang and kind of what goes in to the background of it. So I appreciate Ford for sending me out to that event. Anyways, guys, if you wanna watch more content from me, click the square right here. Take care.